The following audio file contains the spoken version of a Wikipedia article titled Eric Cartman, read by Jay Grieve on October 1st, 2021. Eric Cartman on Wikipedia, the free encyclopedia, at en.wikipedia.org. Eric Theodore Cartman, often referred to just by his surname, is a main character in the animated television series South Park, created by Matt Stone and Trey Parker, and voiced by Parker. He is one of the series' four central characters, along with Stan Marsh, Kyle Brovlovsky, and Kenny McCormick. Cartman first appeared, originally in prototypical form, in a 1992 animated short, Jesus vs. Frosty, and a 1995 animated short, Jesus vs. Santa, and first appeared on television in the pilot episode of South Park, Cartman Gets an Anal Probe, on August 13, 1997. Cartman is an elementary school student who lives with his mother in the fictional town of South Park, Colorado, where he routinely has extraordinary experiences atypical of a small town. Cartman has been portrayed as aggressive, savage, prejudiced, arrogant, and narcissistic since his character's inception. Stone and Parker describe the character as a little Archie Bunker. In later seasons, particularly after the events of Scott Tennerman Must Die, Cartman begins to exhibit extremely psychopathic, sociopathic, and manipulative behavior and is also depicted as highly intelligent, being able to execute morally appalling plans and business ideas with success, but most of his plans usually end up in failure and humiliation due to someone, usually either Stan or Kyle or both, or something, example a Murr Record Award in Christian Rock Hard, that ruins his schemes. Cartman is considered by prominent publications and television channels to be the most popular and famous character on South Park, one of the most influential characters in cartoon and television history, and an American cultural icon. Parker and Stone state that he is their favorite character and the one with whom they most identify. South Park has received both praise and criticism for Cartman's politically incorrect behavior. This article contains six sections, which are entitled 1. Role in South Park 2. Character 2.1. Creation and Design 2.2. Development 2.3. Personality and Traits 3. Cultural Impact 3.1. Recognition 4. In Other Media 5. References 5.1. Bibliography 6. External Links This article also contains an info box with the following information on the character of Eric Cartman, South Park Character. First Appearance, Jesus vs. Frosty, 1992 Short Created by Trey Parker, Matt Stone Portrayed by Brandon Hardesty I Should Have Never Gone Ziplining Voiced by Trey Parker In-Universe Information Full Name, Eric Theodore Cartman Alias the Coon Species Human Gender Male Family Leanne Cartman Mother Jack Tennerman Father Deceased Scott Tennerman Half Brother Significant Other Heidi Turner Ex Girlfriend Nationality American Residence South Park, Colorado, United States.
the info box is companioned with an image of Eric Cartman. Section 1. Role in South Park Cartman attends South Park Elementary as part of Mr. Garrison's class. During the show's first 58 episodes, Cartman and the other main characters are in the third grade, after which they move on to the fourth grade. He is raised as an only child by Leanne Cartman, a promiscuous single mother. In Cartman's Mom is Still a Dirty Slut, 1998, Leanne is said to be a hermaphrodite and the father of Cartman, who did not know the woman who gave birth to Cartman. However, the season 14, 2010, episode 201, later reveals that Leanne is his mother and that his true biological father is Jack Tennerman, a fictional former player for the Denver Broncos whom Cartman arranged to be killed in the season 5, 2001 episode, Scott Tennerman Must Die, making Cartman and Scott Tennerman half-brothers. Among the show's main child characters, Cartman is distinguished as the fat kid, and his obesity is a continuing subject of insults and ridicule from other characters throughout the show's run. Cartman is frequently portrayed as an antagonist or villain whose actions set in motion the events serving as the main plot of an episode. Other children and classmates are alienated by Cartman's insensitive, racist, xenophobic, anti-Semitic, lazy, self-righteous behavior, but are occasionally influenced by his obtrusive, manipulative, and propagandistic antics. Kyle, who is Jewish, is at times the target of Cartman's slander and anti-Semitic insults. Cartman has shared an enmity with all three of his friends since the show's beginnings, though his rivalry with both Stan and Kyle became significantly more pronounced as the series progressed, with Cartman even routinely exposing them to physical endangerment. He also refused to let them into an amusement park he purchased in Cartmanland. In another instance, in Tonsil Trouble, Cartman deliberately infected Kyle with HIV. Kyle intentionally endangered Cartman as well by convincing him in Fatbeard to go to Somalia in hopes that he will be killed. His rivalry with the other characters stems from opposition in personalities. Where Kyle is restrained by firm morals, Cartman would rather indulge in pleasure and goes out of his way to hurt others. He also described Kenny as the one he hated the most in Jacophosaurs. In the episode Kenny Dies, Cartman takes advantage of Kenny's declining health to get a ban on research of stem cells removed in order to construct his own Shakey's Pizza restaurant made out of fetus stem cells. Kyle is sometimes an enthusiastic participant in Cartman's schemes, and Cartman is sometimes seen treating Kyle well, although this is generally to put aside their hatred momentarily for a common goal or for manipulation. Parker and Stone have compared the relationship to the one shared by Archie Bunker and Michael Meathead Stivick on the 1970s sitcom All in the Family. Kyle has a tendency to make what he thinks are safe bets with Cartman, and often loses these bets when the improbable actions promised by Cartman are accomplished. Cartman's motivation in this regard is not merely monetary gain, but an obsession with scoring a victory over Kyle, a fixation that ultimately plays a major part in a subplot to a three-part episode, Imagination Land, Season 11, 2007. This obsession has also proven itself to trump other goals Cartman wishes to achieve. For instance, in Christian Rock Hard, Cartman makes a bet with Kyle that he can make a platinum album before Kyle can. After recruiting Butters and Token, Cartman creates a Christian rock band called Faith Plus One and, 
quote, writes, end quote, Christian songs by merely taking love songs and replacing words such as baby with Jesus, and which thereby humorously implies sexual relations with Jesus. Against all odds, the band becomes largely successful, managing to sell over a million copies, and potentially gain millions of dollars. However, since Christian rock bands cannot truly get a platinum album, which is not true in real life, Cartman loses the bet. Despite having amassed a large fan base, as well as a large, steady income, Cartman only becomes enraged since he was unable to win the bet with Kyle. Careless in his anger accepting the Murr album in front of a large Christian crowd, Cartman goes into an anti-Christian rant which drives away all of the fans as well as profits. Cartman has also been shown to have a high sadistic streak towards Kyle. He has repeatedly expressed desire in seeing him suffer. He has also shown to enjoy Kyle's suffering and humiliation to the extremes. In You're Getting Old, the final episode of the first half of South Park's 15th season, it is suggested that Kyle and Cartman may be developing a genuine friendship, possibly due to the void left by Stan's apparent departure. This soon withers away as both return to the status quo of arch-enemies at the end of Asperger's, due to Kyle realizing the repulsive way Cartman was producing his burgers. Cartman's resentment of Stan is at times reserved for when Cartman proudly proclaims his hatred for both Stan and Kyle as a duo, and his contempt for Stan as an individual is usually due to his annoyance with Stan's sensitivity, affection for animals, and relationship with Wendy Testaberger. Despite being intolerant of other cultures, Cartman displays an aptitude for learning foreign languages. In the episode, My Future Self and Me, when he starts Parental Revenge Corp, he speaks Spanish to his Mexican workers, though he may have learned the language in order to better exploit a labor pool. He also knows German, and once spoke a few phrases while dressed up as Adolf Hitler, while promoting the extermination of Jews to an oblivious audience that did not speak German. Cartman can also be seen speaking broken German with an American accent in Season 15, Episode 2, Funny Bot. Conversely, in one episode, Major Boobage, Cartman acts as an Oscar Schindler character for the town's cats, a rare case of a subplot based on Cartman's altruism. Cartman frequently teases Kenny for being poor, and derides Kenny's family for being on welfare, despite the fact, revealed in The Poor Kid, that Cartman is the second poorest child in the school, and revealed in Here Comes the Neighborhood, that his family collects welfare from the government as well. For the first several seasons, his family's income comes exclusively from welfare programs and his mother's work as a prostitute. Later, Leanne takes an unspecified legitimate day job as well. Based on Cartman's depicted lifestyle and Leanne's assertion that they are not much poorer than any other family, it is likely that the household makes somewhat more money than Eric believes and only appear poorer based on Butter's search of tax records, because Leanne does not report her prostitution income. Cartman will use an awkward pause during a conversation as an opportunity to casually remind Kenny that he hates him. Cartman's mischievous treatment of Butter's, and the relationship the duo shares, has received significant focus in more recent seasons of the series. This reflects Parker's interest. The scenes between the two are the ones he most enjoys writing. Several episodes concern Cartman's greed and his get-rich-quick schemes, although his numerous attempts to attain wealth generally fail. 
His extreme disdain for hippies serves to satirize the counterculture of the 1960s and its influence in contemporary society, reflecting Parker's real-life antipathy towards hippies. Though the role is customarily taken by Stan or Kyle, Cartman will occasionally be the one to reflect on the lessons learned during the course of an episode with a speech that often begins with, quote, You know, I've learned something today, end quote. Section 2. Character. Section 2.1. Creation and Design. A precursor to Cartman first appeared in the first The Spirit of Christmas short, dubbed Jesus vs. Frosty, created by Parker and Stone in 1992 while they were students at the University of Colorado. In the short, a character resembling Cartman was named Kenny, and a variation of the catchphrase, Oh my God, they killed Kenny, was exclaimed when this character was killed by an evil snowman. The character was composed of construction paper cutouts and animated through the use of stop motion. When commissioned three years later by friend Brian Graydon to create another short as a video Christmas card that he could send to friends, Parker and Stone created another similarly animated The Spirit of Christmas short dubbed Jesus vs. Santa. In this short, his character first appears as he does in the series, and is given the name Cartman, while the character of Kenny appears as the character is depicted today, and given Cartman's moniker from the previous short. Cartman next appeared on August 13, 1997, when South Park debuted on Comedy Central with the episode Cartman Gets an Anal Probe. In keeping with the show's animation style, Cartman is composed of single geometrical shapes and primary colors. He is not offered the same free range of motion associated with hand-drawn characters. His character is mostly shown from one direction, and his movements are intentionally jerky. Ever since the show's second episode, Weight Gain 4000, Season 1, 1997, Cartman, like all characters on the show, has been animated with computer software, though he is portrayed to give the impression that the show still utilizes its original technique. Cartman is usually depicted wearing winter attire, which consists of a red coat, brown pants, yellow gloves mittens, and a yellow-brimmed turquoise knit cap tapered with a yellow pom-pom. He has parted brown hair, and he is seen without his hat more often than the other characters with distinctive headwear. As he is overweight, his body is wider, and his hands noticeably larger than those of the other children, and his head is more elliptical. An occasional curved line on his lower face represents a double chin. Parker adducted that he came up with the voice of Cartman while he and Stone were in film class, where they would speak in high-pitched childish voices, which was quite irksome to their film teachers. They would naturally reproduce these voices in the initial seasons of South Park. Although he had originally voiced Cartman without any computer manipulation, Parker now does so by speaking within his normal vocal range with a childlike inflection. The recorded audio is then edited with Pro Tools, and the pitch is altered to make the voice sound like that of a fourth grader. Parker says to achieve the effect of Cartman's voice, he simply uses the same technique when voicing Stan, while, quote, adding a lot of fat to it, end quote. Section 2.2. Development. Cartman is partially named after and based on Matt Karpman, a high school classmate of Parker, who remains a friend of both Parker and Stone. Cartman is also inspired to some degree by All in the Family patriarch Archie Bunker, who is himself inspired by Alf Garnet from Till Death Do Us Part, the original British version of All in the Family. Parker and Stone are reportedly big fans of All in the Family. 
They alleged in 2008 that creating Cartman as a, quote, little eight-year-old fat kid, end quote, made it easier for the two to portray a bunker-like character after the introduction of political correctness to late 20th century television. While developing the character, Parker noted that everyone either remembers, quote, an annoying fat kid in their pasts, end quote, or, quote, they were the annoying fat kid, end quote. Stone has observed that, quote, kids are not nice, innocent, flower-loving, little rainbow children. They don't have any kind of social tact or etiquette. They're just complete little raging bastards, end quote. In the season 5, 2001 episode, Scott Tennerman Must Die, Cartman is tricked into buying the pubic hair of local ninth grader named Scott Tennerman for $16.12. He then successfully executes an elaborate scheme to publicly humiliate Scott in front of his favorite band, Radiohead, by getting Scott's parents killed and then tricking Scott into eating them. The show's writers debated during production of the episode whether or not the incident would be a, quote, step too far, even for Cartman, end quote. Parker felt that the act could sufficiently be the culmination of Cartman's sociopathic behavior and would set a new bar by portraying Cartman as being capable of performing anything short of murder. Fans reacted by ranking it as Cartman's, quote, greatest moment, end quote, in a 2005 poll on Comedy Central's website. It is later revealed that in the season 14 episode, 201, that Jack Tennerman, Scott's father, was a football player for the Denver Broncos, who impregnated Cartman's mom, therefore making him Cartman's father, too. Parker and Stone, despite being the basis for Stan and Kyle, insist that Cartman is their favorite character, and the one with whom they identify the most. Section 2.3 Personality and Traits Cartman uses profanity, as do his friends, to provide a means for Parker and Stone to portray how they believe young boys really talk when they are alone. According to Parker, Cartman does not possess the underlying sweetness of the show's other child characters. Cartman is shown at times to be completely amoral and remorseless. Cartman, as with Stan Marsh and Kyle Brovlovsky, is amused by bodily functions and toilet humor, and his favorite television personalities are Terence and Philip, a Canadian duo whose comedy routines on their show within the show revolve substantially around fart jokes. Cartman is sensitive and in denial about his obesity, often reasserting Leanne's notion by exclaiming, quote, I'm not fat, I'm big-boned, end quote, and will just as often either threaten to bring harm to anyone who mocks his weight or curse them out in aggravation. He has also had people killed, after the psychiatrist mocked his weight, Cartman framed the man as a pedophile to his wife, causing her to commit suicide. He views himself as more mature than his fellow friends and classmates, and often grows impatient with their company. Despite claiming to be more mature, he will often break down crying childishly and pathetically whenever he feels defeated. This often leads to loud arguments, which in earlier seasons typically end with Cartman peevishly saying, quote, Screw you guys, I'm going home, end quote, and then leaving. In an action King's College philosophy professor David Kyle Johnson describes as, quote, directed either toward accomplishing his own happiness or the unhappiness of others, end quote, Cartman often feigns actual friendships with his classmates when needing a favor. The lack of a true father figure in his life, and Leanne's promiscuity and drug use have caused repressed psychological hardship in Cartman's life. As a parent, Leanne often spoils Cartman, and is largely ineffectual as a disciplinarian. 
Cartman sometimes commands his mom to do tasks for him, but more often resorts to pleading with her in an ingratiating tone. When neither method works, he resorts to excessive and indecipherable whining, to which Leanne usually succumbs. Parker has noted that this is the primary cause for Cartman's behavior, stating that Cartman is, quote, just a product of his environment, end quote. Quote, we always had this thing where Cartman's mother was so sweet. She was always so sweet to him and giving him whatever he wanted. And I don't know if it's worse in L.A. than most places in the country. I hope so. But we've met so many parents who were just so desperately trying to be friends with their kids. And it was the thing we really picked up on. And it was like... These people are making these really evil kids, end quote. Trey Parker discussing Leanne's role in shaping Cartman's personality in an interview with NPR. Cartman thrives on achieving ascendancy over others, and exerts his will by demagogy and by demanding that others, quote, respect ma authorita, end quote. Cartman has several times declared that his dream is getting $10 million, and that if he got it, he would be so happy. He has shown initiative in taking a business-like approach to earning money, starting his own hippie control and parental revenge operations, as well as a Christian rock and a boy band, a basketball team of crack babies, parody of the NCAA, and his own church. Cartman's anti-Semitism, while mostly limited to mocking Kyle, culminates in the season 8 episode, The Passion of the Jew. In the episode, Cartman, after watching The Passion of the Christ numerous times, defies the film's director, Mel Gibson, and starts an official Gibson fan club, praising Gibson for, quote, trying to express through cinema, the horror and filthiness of the common Jew, end quote. Cartman's interpretation of the film influences him to dress up as Adolf Hitler and lead other fan club members, who are oblivious to Cartman's actual intentions, in a failed effort to engage in a systematic genocide of the Jews, similar to that of The Final Solution. In the season 10 episode, Smug Alert, Cartman anonymously saves Kyle's life in an effort to get him and his family to return to South Park from San Francisco, revealing that he craves the animosity shared between the two. Cartman later directs the evil god Cthulhu to destroy most of the synagogues during the season 14 episode, Coon vs. Coon and Friends. Upon hearing his classmates tell him that they hold him in the lowest regard possible, and that they could not possibly think any worse of him, a stubborn Cartman misinterprets this act as their attempt to make him feel better, and convinces himself that everyone thinks he is the, quote, coolest kid in school, end quote. In the season 13, 2009 episode, Fish Sticks, Cartman subconsciously believes that he helped in creating a joke that quickly becomes a nationwide sensation, despite the fact that the character Jimmy Vollmer writes the joke without any assistance. Carlos Delgado of If Magazine noted this as, quote, Cartman being so egotistical that he manipulates the past to serve his own purposes, end quote. In season 20, after Cartman's wrongfully accused of being a persistent and highly aggressive internet troll, Gerald Brovlovsky, leaving foul posts primarily targeting women and girls on South Park Elementary's school message boards, the other boys destroy most of Cartman's electronics, and by extension, his social media presence, causing him to become despondent to everything around him. That is until Heidi Turner, who had quit social media in response to the trolling, offers to show him life outside of social media. The two quickly become friends, and later, an official couple. 
Though he is commonly portrayed as having a chauvinistic disrespect for foreign cultures, Cartman is shown at least twice, My Future Self and Me, and Pandemic, to be able to speak fluent Spanish and German. In certain episodes, Cartman is shown to think of himself as a skilled fighter, only to be beaten up by Wendy, Token, Stan, and Kyle at different times. However, when Cartman thinks he has some sort of authority, such as being the coon or the hallway monitor, he displays various martial arts knowledge and proves to be able to beat up various other characters, such as Butters, Clyde, and Bradley. Section 3. Cultural Impact Cartman is a South Park fan favorite, and is often described as the most famous character from the series, as well as having a significant influence on comedy and culture. When a headline to their online written version of a radio report, NPR declared Cartman as, quote, America's favorite little expletive, end quote. Respect ma authorita, and screw you guys, I'm going home, became catchphrases, and during the show's earlier seasons, were highly popular in the lexicon of viewers. His eccentric pronunciation of hey was included in the 2002 edition of the Oxford Dictionary of Catchphrases. Stone has said that when fans recognize him or Parker, the fans will usually do their imitation of Cartman or, in Parker's case, request that he do Cartman's voice. In 2005, Comedy Central ran a three-night marathon of episodes showcasing what voters had deemed to be his 25 greatest moments. A two-disc DVD collection entitled The Cult of Cartman, which Comedy Central described as, quote, 12 classic episodes with Cartman at his very worst, end quote, was released in 2008. In a 1999 poll conducted by Nat West Bank, eight- and nine-year-old children in the United Kingdom voted Cartman as their favorite personality. This drew the concern of several parent councils who were expecting a character from a television show aimed at children to top the list, to which Stone responded by claiming the results of the poll were, quote, upsetting to people who have an idyllic vision of what kids are like, end quote. While some in the Jewish community have praised the show's depiction of Cartman holding an anti-Semitic attitude towards Kyle as a means of accurately portraying what it is like for a young Jew to have to endure prejudice, other Jews have blamed South Park and Cartman for having found themselves surrounded by acceptable racism. On November 20, 2008, a Facebook group titled, quote, National Kick a Ginger Day, Are You Going to Do It?, end quote, surfaced, suggesting abuse towards redheads. Thousands of internet users signed up as a member of the group, and reports of a federal increase of bullying of red-headed students across Canada soon followed. The group's administrator, a 14-year-old from Vancouver Island, said the group was only intended as a joke, and apologized for the offense it caused. The group was inspired by the Season 9, 2005 episode, Ginger Kids, in which Cartman incites prejudice towards those with red hair, pale skin, and freckles, a group he calls Gingers, and claims are inherently evil and without souls. A YouTuber, Copper Cab, was deeply offended by Cartman's belittlement to Gingers. Cartman recreated one of Copper Cab's videos, complete with looking like a ginger child, acting crazy, and saying that Gingers do have souls. Other characters commonly express lessons learned from the antagonistic actions Cartman commonly provokes. This has resulted in these characters giving their opinions on issues such as hate crime legislation, civil liberties, excessive religious devotion, the stem cell controversy, anabolic steroid use, the right to die debate, and prejudice. In the season 10, 2006 episode, Cartoon Wars Part 2, 
Cartman, planning to exploit the public's fear of terrorism, seeks to get the Fox television series Family Guy, a program he despises, permanently removed from the airwaves when Fox plans to air an episode despite its inclusion of a cartoon likeness of Muhammad. This leads Kyle to give a short speech about the ethics of censorship, which reiterates Parker and Stone's sentiments of, quote, either it's all okay or none of it is, end quote, in regards to whether or not any subject should remain off-limits to satire. Both Cartman's commentary and the commentary resulting in response to his actions have been interpreted as sentiments Parker and Stone are attempting to make to the viewing public, and these opinions have been subject to much critical analysis in the media and literary worlds. The book, South Park and Philosophy, You Know, I Learned Something Today, includes an essay in which Johnson uses Cartman's actions and behavior as examples when discussing the logical problem of moral evil, and another essay by College of Staten Island professor Mark D. White cited the Season 2, 1998 episode, Chicken Lover, in which Cartman is temporarily granted law enforcement powers in its discussion regarding the command theory of law and what obligates a citizen to obey the law. Essays in the books Self Park and Philosophy, Bigger, Longer, and More Penetrating, Blame Canada, Self Park and Contemporary Culture, and Taking Self Park Seriously, have also analyzed Cartman's perspectives within the framework of popular philosophical, theological, political, and social concepts. Parker and Stone downplay the show's alignment with any particular political affiliation, and deny having a political agenda when creating an episode. In response to the focus on elements of satire in South Park, Parker has said that the main goal of the show is to portray Cartman and his friends as, quote, kids just being kids, end quote, as a means of accurately showcasing what it's like to be in an elementary school in America. Section 3.1. Recognition. TV Guide ranked Cartman at number 10 on their 2002 list of the top 50 greatest cartoon characters, 24th on TV Guide's 25 Greatest TV Villains, 198th on VH1's 200 Greatest Pop Culture Icons, and 19th on Bravo's 100 Greatest TV Characters television special in 2004. When declaring him the second scariest character on television, behind only Mr. Burns of The Simpsons, in 2005, MSNBC's Brian Belmont described Cartman as a, quote, bundle of pure, unadulterated evil, all wrapped up in a fat, er, big-boned, cartoony package, end quote, who takes a feral delight in his evil doing. In 2014, IGN ranked Cartman first place on their list of the top 25 South Park characters commenting that he was the obvious choice of number one, and that sometimes the obvious choice is also the right one. The website stated that despite Cartman being, quote, one of the worst human beings in the history of fiction, he's the most loathsome character we've ever loved, end quote. IGN concluded by calling him, quote, the biggest contribution to the world of animated characters that South Park has made, and that's saying something." End quote. Section 4. In Other Media Cartman has a major role in South Park, Bigger, Longer, and Uncut, the full-length film based on the series, and appeared on the film's soundtrack singing the same musical numbers performed in the movie. As a tribute to the Dead Parrot sketch, a short that features Cartman attempting to return a dead Kenny to a shop run by Kyle, aired during a 1999 BBC television special commemorating the 30th anniversary of Monty Python's Flying Circus. Cartman is also featured in the documentary film 
the aristocrats, telling his version of the film's titular joke to Stan, Kyle, and Kenny, and The Gauntlet, a short spoofing of both Gladiator and Battlefield Earth that aired during the 2000 MTV Movie Awards. For their 2007 Snakes and Arrows tour, the rock band Rush commissioned a short video introduction for the song Tom Sawyer. Cartman, dressed in a long wig to look like singer Geddy Lee, sings his own personal version of the song's lyrics, prompting the usual outrage from Kyle. The video can be seen on the band's Snakes and Arrows concert video. In 2002, Cartman became the main protagonist of a series of promotional videos for the Los Angeles Kings of the NHL, which are played on the big screen TVs inside of Staples Center, where the character ridicules the mascots of rival teams and reacts to various aspects of the game. Short clips of Cartman introducing the starting lineup for the University of Colorado football team were featured during ABC's coverage of the 2007 matchup between the University of Colorado and the University of Nebraska. In 2008, Parker, as Cartman, gave answers to a Proust questionnaire conducted by Julie Rovner of NPR. Parker performs as Cartman on the tracks for Chef Aid, the South Park album, and Mr. Hankey's Christmas Classics. Cartman also appeared in six South Park-related video games. In South Park, Cartman is controlled by the player through the first-person shooter mode who attempts to ward off enemies from terrorizing the town of South Park. In South Park, Chef's Love Shack, a user has the option of playing as Cartman when participating in the game's several mini-games based on other popular arcade games. In the racing game South Park Rally, a user can race as Cartman against other users playing as other characters while choosing to place him in any variety of vehicles. In South Park Let's Go Tower Defense Play, Cartman can be selected as a playable character used to establish a tower defense against the game's antagonists. In South Park The Stick of Truth, Cartman is the leader of one of two tribes in South Park, at war over the Stick of Truth. Cartman is later a selectable companion character in this JRPG-style game. He plays a similar role in the game's superhero-themed sequel, South Park, The Fractured But Whole, where he leads the Coon and Friends team. A cover of Poker Face was released as DLC for the Rock Band video game series in 2010, based on the version heard in the episode Whale Whores, released the same day as the original, featuring Cartman on lead vocals. Section 5. References There are references available in the written form of this article. Please be sure to verify information found on Wikipedia using the references provided or by cross-referencing the information yourself. Section 6. External Links A link to the Eric Cartman page at South Park Studios is provided in the written form of this article. This article is accompanied by an image of Trey Parker, with the caption, Cartman is voiced by series co-creator Trey Parker. This is the end of the spoken article, Eric Cartman. The spoken version of this article was created upon the request of user LionsDude148, submitted to Wikiproject Spoken Wikipedia. As of time of recording, this article has been listed as one of the media and drama good articles under the good article criteria. This sound file and all text in the article are licensed under the Creative Commons Attribution Share Alike 3.0 Unported License, available at creativecommons.org.